ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैव नरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास जय मुदीर नष्टप्रायशो भद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवय भगवती ऋतुम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ट की ज्ञानाजन शलाकय चक्षुरुदय नम विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा पुतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादि पाश्चात्य देश तारिणी जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री द्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौरव वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओके दान धर्मान राज धर्मान मोक्ष धर्मान विभागशा श्री धर्मान भगवत धर्मान ियलीवली <clears throat> but but to give charity is one of the householder's main functions and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard earned money so we discussed this before a brahmachari or student should perform sacrifices a householder should give charity and a person in the retired life or in the renounced order should practice penances and austerities means a brahmachari is to do sacrifices householder to give charity vana prastha and sanyasa is for penances and austerities those are the general functions of all the ashramas or orders of life on the path of self realization meaning if somebody wants to progress on the path of self realization in these different ashramas they should do these activities <clears throat> in the brahmachari life the training is sufficiently imparted so that one may understand that the world understand the world as property belongs to the supreme lord the person who got it no one therefore can claim to be the proprietor of anything in the world and this has to be taught when children in childhood only in brahmacharis are taught that they are not the proprietors therefore in the life of a householder which is a sort of license for sex enjoyment one must give in charity for the service of the lord because we are not the proprietors everyone's energy is generated or borrowed from the reservoir of energy of the lord we borrowed energy from him so wherever we use our energy whatever result comes should be used for him the resultant actions of such energy must be given to the lord in the shape of transcendental loving service for him as the rivers draw water from the sea through the clouds and again go down to the sea similarly our energy is borrowed from the supreme source the lord's energy and it must return to the lord it must return to the lord in the way of the results being used in his service that is the perfection of our energy the lord therefore in the bhagavad gita says that whatever we do whatever we undergo as penance whatever we sacrifice right roshya dashnasi whatever we eat whatever we give in charity must be offered to him of course this is just a karma yoga works hmm say in the okay use your energy and whatever comes out whatever we do everything should be done must be offered to him this doesn't say do what krishna wants this is whatever we do hmm so this is not bhakti yoga works this is karma yoga works because the focus here is on what we do not on krishna as a matter of Fact, okay, we'll offer it. Just formality, but that's also good. That is required uh, for those who are not engaging in bhakti, and they have to at least do this. That is a way of utilizing our borrowed energy. When our energy is utilized in that way, our energy is purified from the contamination of material impurities, and thus we become fit for our original nature, natural life of service to the Lord. so even if we are uh, do karma yoga uh, eventually we will become purified 
and I will come to Bhakti. So this was um, basically Varna Dharma. Um, Raja Dharma is a great science, unlike modern diplomacy of political for political supremacy. Our kings were trained systematically to become munificent and not merely be tax collectors. They were trained to perform different sacrifices only for the prosperity of the subjects. To lead the prajas to the attainment of salvation was the great duty of the king. Actually, this was the central duty. To lead the prajas to attainment of salvation. The father, the spiritual master and the king are not to become irresponsible in the matter of leading their subjects to the path of ultimate liberation from birth, death, diseases and old age. Father, guru and king. When these primary duties are properly discharged, there is no need of government of people by people. In modern days, the people in general occupy the administration by the strength of manipulated votes, but they are never trained in the primary duties of the king. And that is also not possible for everyone. Under the circumstances, the untrained administrators play havoc, make the subjects happy in all respects. On the other hand, the un these untrained administrators gradually become rogues and thieves and increase the taxation to finance a top-heavy administration that is useless for all purposes. Actually, the qualified brahmanas are meant to give direction to the kings for proper administration in terms of the scriptures like the Manu Samhita and Dharma Shastras of Parashara. A typical, typical king is the ideal of the people in general. And if a king is pious, religious, chivalrous and munificent, the citizens generally follow him. And so one has to be pious, religious, Chivalrous, be ready to give and munificent. Such a king is not a lazy, sensuous person living at the cost of the subjects, but alert always to kill thieves and dacoits. The pious kings were not merciful to dacoits and thieves in the name of nonsensical ahimsa. <laughs> so those who do nonsensical ahimsa are not pious kings, they are impious kings. The thieves and dacoits were punished in an exemplary way so that in the future no one would dare commit such nuance, nuisances in an organized form. And so thieves and dacoits have to be punished in an exemplary way. Exemplary way means like people should take notice so that nobody will dare commit the, such offenses again, such mistakes again. <coughs> such thieves and dacoits were never meant for administration as they are now. Uh, so, these thieves and decoys have become administrators now. Right? It's a problem. The taxation law was simple. There was no force, no encroachment. The king had a right to take one-fourth. Um, so, 25% tax directly, no questions asked. Um, the king had a right to claim a fourth of one's allotted wealth. One would never grudge parting with it because due to the pious king and religious harmony, there was enough natural wealth, namely grains, fruits, flowers, silk, cotton, milk, jewels, minerals, etc. And therefore, no one was materially unhappy. They had enough, so they were okay. Oh, 25% is going to take. Okay, let him take. The citizens were rich in agriculture and animal husbandry. And therefore, they had enough grains, fruits and milk without any artificial needs of soaps and toilets, cinemas and bars. <laughs> soaps and toilets. The king had to see that the reserved energy of humanity was properly utilized. Human energy is meant not exactly for fulfilling animal propensities, but for self-realization. The whole government was specifically designed to fulfill this particular purpose, which is the purpose of self-realization. As such, the king had to select properly the cabinet ministers, but not on the strength of voting background. The ministers, the military commanders, and even the ordinary soldiers were all selected by personal qualification. Mm -hmm. Personal qualification. And the king had to supervise them properly before they were appointed to their respective posts. It was so nice. Mm -hmm. So people used to be elected, chosen basically, right? Based on personal qualification. And the king had to supervise them before they were appointed. So like uh, internship type, right? Like um, 
so king will observe supervise them properly then okay they they had good personal qualification but they're also even in act in real life when they have to do certain things they are uh, doing like uh, properly okay so then appoint them to their respective posts the king was especially vigilant to see that the tapasvis a person who sacrificed everything for disseminating spiritual knowledge were never disregarded the king knew well that the supreme person of godhead never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees thus tapasvis were trusted leaders even of the rogues and thieves who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis see this was the previous culture where tapasvis and the transcendentalists even rogues and thieves used to obey their orders hmm? today even so called civilized people don't obey their orders the king would give special protection to illiterates the helpless and widows of the state so this is where that extra money needs to be used hmm? special protection to illiterates helpless and widows defense measures were arranged previous to any attack by the enemies not after attack previous to attack defense measures were there taxing process was easy and it was not meant for squandering but was for strengthening the reserve fund the soldiers were recruited from all parts of the world and they were trained for special duty so proper this like you know how should a king be as far as salvation is concerned one has to conquer the principles of lust anger unlawful desires avarice and bewilderment kama krodha loba mada and moha hmm. to get freedom from anger one should learn. okay this is a very important paragraph actually to get freedom from anger so anybody who is struggling with anger from anger what we should learn how to forgive so we have to learn how to forgive hmm. to be this is one amazing one you know when i read this first it was like just hit me to be free from unlawful desires one should not make plans hmm? meaning many times we plan uh, to have our unlawful desires fulfill the unlawful desires so if you want to be free from unlawful desires then don't plan them do not make plans hmm? like okay i want to do this nonsense okay i will do it like this i will do it like that you know like trying to escape from others from being seen by others etc i'm making no don't make plans by spiritual culture one is able to conquer sleep see uh, spiritual culture because as we become more spiritual uh, krishna says in third chapter of bhagavad gita that you will get adhyatmika shakti hmm? you will get transcendental uh, strength so then you can conquer sleep by tolerance only one can conquer desires and avarice tolerance meaning when these desires come uh, all this is just have to tolerate and so please make note of this you know these are actually very powerful ones disturbances from various diseases can be avoided by regular diets regulated diets so proper this saying normally because people don't take proper diets it results in various diseases by self control one can be free from false hopes and money can be saved by avoiding undesirable association so by having bad association money is squandered you can save money by avoiding unnecessary association undesirable association by practice of yoga one can control hunger and worldliness can be avoided by culturing the knowledge of impermanence worldliness meaning in trying to enjoy you know with worldly pleasures can be avoided by culturing knowledge of impermanence saying that okay all these things are anyway impermanent and temporary so why am i getting in involved here dizziness can be conquered by rising up false arguments can be conquered by factual ascertainment talkativeness can be avoided by gray gravity and silence by prowess one can avoid fearfulness perfect knowledge can be obtained by self cultivation one must be free from lust avarice anger dreaming etc to actually attain the path of salvation so to get rid of all these 
Yeah, these are other ways. Of course, bhakti directly, like we've discussed many times, because of bhakti actually will uh, uh, will knock off all these. Uh, but it's also uh, good to look at some of these and try to develop these qualities as well by practice. And parallel maybe we are doing bhakti, so both together will, will be more powerful, faster results. So it's uh, so you can see what what is where are we stuck or what are the challenges we are facing and then look at which aspects we should um, try to inculcate in our life. Mm. As far as the women class are concerned, they are accepted as a power of inspiration for men. As such, women are more powerful than men. Mm. See, mighty Julius Caesar was controlled by Cleopatra. Such powerful women are controlled by shyness. Therefore, shyness is important for women. Once this control valve is loosened, women can create havoc in society by adultery. Adultery means production of unwanted children known as Varna Sankara who disturb the world. Hmm. The last item taught by Bhishma Dev was the process of pleasing the Lord. We are all eternal servants of the Lord. And when we forget the essential part of our nature, we are put into material conditions of life. Essential part of our nature is to be servants of our love of the Lord. The simple process for pleasing the Lord for the householders especially is to install the deity of the Lord at home. By concentrating on the deity, one may progressively go on with the daily routine work. Concentrating on the deity, meaning it's not just the there is installation of deity at home and then no attention is paid. The whole attention of the host must be towards the deity. It must be centered around the deity. Then one will make progress. Not if it is just uh, like, you know, mechanically, like some deity is installed and yeah, not much attention is paid, then it's not much use. Uh, worshipping the deity at home, serving the devotee, Hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in a holy place, chanting the holy name of the Lord are all inexpensive items which one with which by which one can please the Lord. And so this is Nectar of Devotion talks about um, important angas of bhakti. Hmm? Worshipping the deity, serving the devotee, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in a holy place, chanting the holy name. And of this, chanting the holy name is the most important. As the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren. See, uh, so grandfather explained to grandchildren, parents should explain to children. Mm, when grandparents are there, grandparents have to explain these things to children uh, and not get involved in, you know, like, what should you say? <clears throat> in their indulgences, encouraging them in their indulgences. You show the right path. Okay. Dharma takama moksham scha sa saho payan yathamune nana katyani katyane nana khyane itihaseshu varnayam asatat with then he described occupation duties of different orders and statuses of life citing instances from history for he was himself well acquainted with the truth incidents mentioned in the vedic literature such as the puranas mahabharata and ramayana are factual historical narrations that took place sometime in the past although not in any chronological order that's why they is called itihasa itihasa means history such historical facts being instructive for ordinary men were assorted without chronological reference. Besides that, they happen on different planets, may in different universes, and thus the description of the narrations is sometimes measured by three dimensions. Hmm. We are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidents, even though we, they are not in order by our limited range of understanding. Bhishma Deva described such narrations before Maharaj Yudhishthir in reply to his different questions. For example, even in Bhagavatam, like we keep seeing uh, different conversations, different incidents, conversation within a conversation, 
like so many things it seems like you know it's all over the place but yeah we can't try and find a chronological order if, he, if there is one okay it's good but mm, we are more interested in the instructive lessons that's what we should focus on dharmam pravada tastasya sakala patyupastitaha yo yoginas chandam rityor vanchitas tutarayanaha while bhishma deva was describing occupational duties the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere which is what it is now this period is desired by the mystics who die at their will the perfect yogis or mystics can leave the material body at their own sweet will at a suitable time and go to a suitable planet desired by them perfected yogis in bhagavad gita it is said that self realized souls who exactly identified themselves with the interests of the supreme lord meaning devotees can generally leave the material body during the time of the fire gods effulgence and when the sun is in the northern horizon and thus achieve the transcendental sky they can generally leave but then krishna also says in the next verse saying that devotees don't bother about all this Mm. so one can leave the material body during the time of fire gods effulgence mm. and when the sun is in the northern horizon that is this uttarayana in the vedas these times are considered auspicious for quitting the body and they are taken advantage of by the expert mystics who have perfected the system perfection of yoga means attainment of such super super mental states It's to be able to leave the material body as desired mm. perfection of yoga super mental states meaning they not uh, just have the ability to control what time they want to live yogis can also reach any planet within no time without a material vehicle the yogis can reach the highest planetary system within a very short time and this is impossible for the materialist even attempting to reach the highest planet will take millions of years at a speed of millions of miles per hour this is a different science and bhishma deva knew well how to utilize it he was just waiting for the suitable moment to quit his material body and the golden opportunity arrived when he was instructing his noble grandsons the pandava he just prepared himself to quit his body before the exalted lord shri krishna the pious pandavas and the great sages headed by bhagwan vyasa etc all great souls <clears throat> somewhere also it's commented saying that it's not that bhishma dev was actually waiting for uttarayana he was actually doing his part and by the when he finished by the time it was uttarayana so you know it was like yeah, it just happened to be uttarayana he was just he, his this one whole thing was this golden opportunity when he was instructing hmm, his grandsons pandavas that's what he was mainly focusing on and when that was done uh, it was uttarayana so that's all because devotees don't have to worry about this tado pasam ಗಿರ ಸಹಸ್ರನೈರ್ ಸಹಸ್ರನೀರ್ ವಿಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಗಂ ಮನ ಆದಿಪುರುಷೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣೇ ಲಸತ್ಪೀತ ಪಟೇ ಚತುರ್ಭುಜೇ ಉರ ಸ್ಥಿತೆ ಮಿಲಿತ ದೃಗ್ ವ್ಯಧಾರಯ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮಾಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಎಪಿಸೋಡ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ರೀಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ನೌ thereupon that man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men stopped speaking he just stopped speaking hmm he used to speak on different subjects with thousands of meanings he just stopped speaking and being completely freed from all bondage he just withdrew his mind from everything else look at his power look at his power he just stopped speaking and then he just withdrew his mind from everything else being completely freed from bondage meaning no connection to this material world and what did he do fix his wide open eyes upon the original person and got it sri krishna who stood before him hmm? 400 dust in yellow garments that glittered and shined because bhishma dev desired to see the lord in this form this partha sarthi form right so he just 
stopped everything. Stopped. <laughs> Let me fix this by a wide, wide open eyes, wide open eyes. You know, like what? Are, what is wide open eyes? Mm -hmm. So just focused on Lord. We are so happy to see His Mr. Deva. So Prabhupada writes a very beautiful purport here <clears throat> about how to leave the body. In the momentous hour of leaving his material body, Bhishma Dev set the glorious example concerning the important function of the human form of life. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. Simple, simple, powerful, clear statement. Subject matter which attracts the dying man. Please note this word. Whatever attracts us, that is what we are going to think about. And that's why many times before we have talked about developing, developing attraction for Krishna, developing attraction for devotees. This attraction, today is so um, is natural. It's naturally going towards material things. Right, and so what will happen if in case, at least I can talk about myself, if I have to give up my body now, I will have to come back again. Right, because there's still too many material thoughts, too many thoughts connected to this material world. And because they're attracting, they're attracting us, so they're the attraction from these material things is more than the attraction we have for Krishna or his devotees or devotional service. It's dangerous. Right? Because then we'll again come back and continue this horrible material existence. Therefore, if one is absorbed in the thoughts of Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, is sure to go back to Godhead without any doubt. Absorbed in the thoughts of Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. Hmm. So two things which can help us right, become absorbed. One is chanting. The other is Ravanam Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hmm. Otherwise, uh, all these mundane topics will continue to, to attract us. <clears throat> Actually, we have to see, you know, as we make progress, that at least mundane topics, the attraction of mundane topics, attraction towards mundane topics should start decreasing. At least it should not increase. It can at least remain flat, but best is it should start decreasing. Because otherwise, you know, very risky. So, Bhagavad Gita 8.5 to 15, Prabhupada has quoted here. Uh, beautiful verses, actually, these, uh, these verses. Whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this, there is no doubt. Uh, quits his body, remembering me alone. And whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Therefore, Arjuna, which form? Should always think of me in the form of Krishna. This Prabhupada is saying. Should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. Prescribed duty. Prescribed. As soon as we hear the word prescribed, Varnashrama. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. So, what is the process? Follow Varnashrama. Whatever activities are being done should be dedicated to Krishna. Mind and intelligence too should be fixed on Krishna. How is that? How do we fix mind and intelligence on Krishna? Intelligence can be fixed on Krishna by Tattva, Shastra, Shastra Adhyan. Right? When we are reading and we are not able to understand or we are trying to memorize verses, by that, the mind and intelligence can be engaged in Krishna. And body has to be engaged either directly in service of Krishna or 
doing prescribed duty and offering the results to Krishna. Then Krishna is saying, you will attain me without doubt. He who meditates on the Supreme Person of God at his mind, constantly engaged in remembering him, undeviated from the path, is sure to reach me. So this is just the beginning of the remembrance. But what stage that remembrance should take? A constant, constantly engaged in remembering. Undeviated, which means that there can't be anything else which can distract us. Which means that we should develop so much attraction, attachment to Krishna, Krishna's devotees, devotional service. <clears throat> then one is sure to reach me. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he is the old, who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is the smallest than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, beyond all material conception. Okay, this is the feature of the Supreme Lord, right? Of him being the Supreme Lord, Krishna being the Supreme Lord. Mm, that's a general guidance, right? For us, we have to think about Krishna as Krishna in Vrindavan, right? And in whatever rasa we've been attracted. That's what we should be meditating on at that time. One at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord. He'll certainly attain to the Supreme Person of Godhead. Persons learned in the Vedas and who utter Omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desire, desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. The yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, which is true for every all parts of yoga. Closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head, one establishes himself in yoga. Now, all this automatically happens for somebody who just is thinking about Krishna without worrying about, uh, you know, where is his life air and this and that. We don't have to be bothered. After being situated in his yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, this process is for those who want to achieve Brahman, right? The supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme person who got it and quits his body, he will certainly reach the spiritual planets. For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain because of his constant engagement in devotional service. Right? So if we are constantly engaged in devotional service, then we will remember him. Then it is easy to obtain him. After attaining me, the great souls or yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries. Because they have attained the highest perfection. Srila Bhishma Dev attained the perfection of fitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have Lord Sri Krishna, the object of his attention, personally present at the time of death. He therefore fixed his open eyes upon him. He wanted to see Krishna for a long time out of his spontaneous love for him. Spontaneous love. He wanted to see him for a long time. Because he was a pure devotee, he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yogic principles. Simple bhakti yoga is enough to bring about perfection. Therefore, the ardent desire of Bhishma Dev was to see the person of Lord Krishna, the most lovable object. And by the grace of the Lord, Sri Bhishma Dev had this opportunity at the last stage of his being. Such a fortunate way of leaving the body. Hmm. So, if uh, throughout our life we have tried uh, to be like here, this verse saying right, that we should be engaged in devotional service. That's why, you know, whether we want to call it, you know, whether we want to think about Varnashrama, non Varnashrama, actually, this thought is coming to my mind saying that actually we don't have to bother about Varnashrama as long as. We naturally develop an attachment to devotional service and start getting engaged in it in more and more. Yeah, obviously, it's like this, like as and how we engage in devotion more and more, it naturally attachment to bhakti increases. Naturally, we want to do more. And if that natural process is happening, then we don't have to bother about Varna and Ashrama. Now, this Varna and Ashrama, Varna, I am, Ashrama is basically to at least put some, you know, uh, to draw lines. Right, so if this natural attachment is not being awakened, okay, let me force myself by disengaging in things that I'm doing so that I can engage in devotional service. So it's it's more like a system which can protect us 
you know if we are not naturally making progress in devotional service which is why it is it is very powerful it is very very powerful because it somehow somewhere draws the line for us which we unfortunately are not able to draw ourselves right uh, so either either we have natural attachment to devotional service and naturally we want to do more and more and more as we age right then yeah we don't have to worry about varnashrama because we might even supersede varnashrama as in uh, we might yeah you know we might start vanaprastha much earlier we might start sanyasa much earlier etc whatever right as in <clears throat> we're just going to be engaged in devotional service more and more so we don't have to worry about varnashrama but if we are not that natural attachment is not then we draw this line oh okay so 50 years they're saying vana vanaprastha so at least you know let me let me let me try to get to a stage in life where i can dedicate myself more to bhakti so that way this uh, that is why this ashrama dharma is still very very powerful even though varna we might find it difficult um, so you know okay we can say whatever varna we are whatever vritti we are in it's okay right but somehow the ashrama duty is at, at least actually will enable one to bring that you know complete focus complete attachment to krishna because otherwise this we can't we can't achieve this you know we can't achieve this stop speaking about useless things withdraw mind from everything else bishma dev was able to do he was a big yogi right big man we are not big we are small insignificant he was we can't just say okay tomorrow i'm going to stop speaking and i withdraw my mind from everything else no that is why this whole ashma is there okay push now fine in one day it won't happen take two days five months six months one year switch which make that switch start speaking about material things so withdraw mind from material things then it is possible to fix us fix our mind is very very important i mean why i i am telling this is because most of us you know grahasthas we have to fix this we have to fix this we can't just go on i mean even with fixing itself i am seeing there are it's not so easy even with actually you know even even after we are able to do full time devotion progress is, takes time it just doesn't happen overnight right so and just imagine if we go on without putting drawing the line then we are just continuing to engage in material things how are we going to achieve perfection right so this verse is just i is just waking us up saying that you know you're not bishma dev mm, better you know do things right so that we can also get to this stage mm. verse for introspection okay i'll stop here hari krishna yeah nakul prabhu hari krishna prabhu वन क्वेश्चन लाइक परपोर्ट इन लास्ट कोपाला सेड दैट बिष्णु देव वाज अ ग्रेट डिवोटी हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस प्रभु लाइक वी नो ही वाज अ क्षत्रिय ही वाज अ ग्रैंडफादर ऑफ पांडवस एंड ऑल हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड ही वाज अ ग्रेट डिवोटी कैन यू जस्ट हाईलाइट सम पॉइंट्स आई मीन लाइक वी आई मीन जस्ट लाइक वी आर ऑल वर्किंग एंड वी हैव आवर ओन ड्यूटीज वी आर परफॉर्मिंग एंड वी आर आल्सो डूइंग भक्ति सो इफ वी मेक सिग्निफिकेंट प्रोग्रेस इन भक्ति समबडी विल से ओके दिस पर्सन was also doing all this in his life but he is also a great devotee it was just his vritti as in his his dharma right he was a kshatriya he, he was doing his duty yeah, of course vishwadev's position was very different because he had taken a vow to protect whoever sits on the throne of hastinapur etc so he was doing that duty that vow he was trying to fulfill um like i mean just like any everybody else right arjuna rama janaka all these great uh, you know either, either the lord himself showing by example or great devotees who all do their vritti dharma at the same time they are devotees parikshit maharaj amrish maharaj i mean the whole of bhagavatam is only about these kind of people right who are doing their vritti but they are not attached maharaj yudhishthir okay they wanted to quit he just quit that's it right no attachment no attachment whatsoever hmm we just saw kaliyuga entering he just said okay done 
I'm not going to waste my time here. Right, so that's how we have to be, right? We have to just drop, or the drop of the hat, give up all this material attachment. And these great kings are showing by their example. I mean, they're not like great kings, so much of wealth, so much of position, fame, this, that, and all that, just drop. <clears throat> because their heart is in devotion. They are just doing their work as a matter of duty, just just to show the path for others. Because they are in those positions of, you know, superior authority, etc. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, can Hare I Krishna. ask you? Prabhuji, the 13th, uh, this thing, after being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable, syllable mm -hmm. Om, Mm -hmm. Prabhuji, Arya Samaji people, they are doing this all their life and, you know, they don't, they chant, they do haban uh, verses from they Gita, they, uh, mm -hmm. they, they sing, but, Vedas. They, but they do not believe in the spiritual form of the Lord, the, uh, Krishna, his, yeah. the deity and all that. Mm -hmm. So do they go back to just the Brahma Jyoti or Brahman, do they Brahman. go back to its yeah, spiritual yeah. If they are not, If they are not offensive, <laughs> if they are not offensive to the form of the Lord, they will go to Brahman. Uh, and yeah, Bhagavatam also says, you know, if you go to Brahman also, you'll get bored and you might come back also. But yeah, for the, the result of their process of their all the difficulties that Krishna says that they take so much of difficulty to achieve Brahman, they might even fall back, fall down. But yeah, they'll achieve Brahman because they are following that process. But they should not be Mayavadis. They should be impersonalists. They can be impersonalists. I mean, Brahmavadis, basically, they just... They just they they just stuck at Brahman. They they can't think beyond. They just say it's okay. I'm happy with this. Then go to Brahman. But Om represents uh, the Lord Himself, no problem. No, but it is the impersonal form. Krishna represents okay. the Lord in His personal form. Om is impersonal. No, but Krishna says no. I'm in the letter Om. That is what. That is impersonal. Okay. Krishna also says I'm Paramatma. I'm Sarvavyapi. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is just saying everything is me. But we have to also have to understand there are impersonal aspects, there is localized aspects, then there is Bhagavan aspect. So everything Krishna is speaking in Bhagavad Gita is not like necessarily separating. No, only when he says man mana bhava mat bhakto, then he says, you know, me. As in me. Right? But otherwise he says, you know, like uh, even Airavata is me. But that Airavata is me is just saying that it's just representing one of the qualities of me, which is great strength in a beast like that. So, yeah. Yes, Prabhupada. Yeah. <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, Prabhu, I have a question regarding, uh, you know, Maya. I was uh, reading 4th chapter, 25th to 26th text. It, Prabhupada explains Maya is like, you know, the uh, which is covered with the, I mean, uh, the one which covers the Brahma Jyoti is called Maya or illusion. So how to understand? So what, what it is, is exactly? Sorry, sorry, what is that? Which, which verse? <clears throat> 25 or 26, probably. Four. Four chapter, yes. BG 425. It talks about Brahma Jyoti and Brahman and then uh, uh, Maya. <laughs> Sense gratification. Mm. Let me open. No, I can't see Maya exactly, but. Uh, let me open and tell you. No, not 26. Looks like 25. Mm. What chapter? 25, 26. Now you can just check maybe. I mean, it doesn't look like... Different. Maybe you can check and put it on yeah. the group. I can. Ah, yeah, yeah. 26, yeah. 24, 24, 24. 24. Everything that exists is situated in that Brahma Jyotir. But when the Jyotir is covered by illusion or sense gratification, it is called material. Yeah. Yes. So basically, see, the uh, what this means is the. Actually, the um, whole of the spiritual world and the material world is present in the Brahma Jyoti. Uh, meaning that Brahma Jyoti is everywhere. Uh, Brahma Jyoti, which is the uh, effulgence coming from the body of the Lord, is spread everywhere uh, uh, over his creation. 
right but okay. then what happens in the you now if the material world has to appear somewhere which is in right. bhagavatam says it appears in one corner of this lord's creation now still that corner of lord's creation uh, brahma jyoti should not enter because if brahma jyoti enters then there can't be ah, any maya mahatatva right, right. Yes. Right, so then that mahatattva covers, right? So that is sanskrit. That's what this covered by illusion means. That right, not like Brahma Jyoti covered by illusion, but right. um, so that part where Brahma Jyoti, where Maya comes in or mahatattva comes in, right. That that's what it's being explained. So Maya is that a person or like in a sense? Yeah, yeah everything in the, No, Maya is uh, Maya Devi is there. Uh, her okay. job is to create illusion. right that's her seva durga devi basically right <coughs> so we can say maya is maya devi durga devi yeah, yeah yeah it's just yeah. impersonal so, of maya. course maya maya also uh, can mean yoga maya so then maha in when it when we are talking with respect to material world we'll say durga devi right. but when we are generally saying we'll actually say yoga maya because maha maya is just uh, uh, she's an expansion or Uh, I'm sure of Yoga Maya. Okay, Yoga Maya represents Subhadra Maya, right? Or... Yeah. Okay. Okay, bro. Thank yeah. you. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. We'll end here. One circle, Patrul Bhis.